Prince James Bay. Thank you, Madam Speaker. It's always a great honour to rise here in the House on behalf of the people of Timmins James Bay at a time when public confidence in public institutions and democracy is at an all-time low. We certainly know all over the world uh, trust in democracy is under very, very frightening uh, pressures. In Canada, recent polls show that 75 percent of the Canadian people believe that Parliament and the behaviour of parliamentarians has become, quote, dishonest and useless. Um, and it is incumbent upon us to be able, at a time of growing difficulty in our country and growing difficulty in very dark times around the world, show that democracy and parliamentarians can work together. Uh, and that's why I'm very concerned about today's debate, which seems to be one between an absolute failure of vision on one hand and an absolute failure of leadership on the other. Uh, that what we're debating really reflects a political race to the bottom that is leading and feeding this growing public alienation and rage farming. Because elected representatives, all of us, have a sacred duty to adjudicate the very difficult economic, environmental, political and international issues that confront us as a nation. So that means occasionally climbing out of our partisan trenches and putting forward a bigger vision for the nation. Uh, and to do that means that sometimes we're going to have to stand up on unpopular issues. Because if we're going to build a long-term future for our children, sometimes it's incumbent upon the leadership of this generation to say tough choices have to be made. But that's not what we're debating here. What we're debating here is the realm of gotcha politics, rage farm politics, in response to a very desperate and cynical gerrymandering of public policy that clearly was seen in the public's eyes as a desperate attempt to shore up uh, Liberal MPs in certain parts of the country. And the result of that was to pit region against region and to raise fundamental questions about a signature piece of the government's climate action plan, which is their carbon pricing, which has now been thrown into doubt. And so we have to find a way as Canadians to address this. It would have been very fair, Madam Speaker, in the fall economic statement, for example, for the Prime Minister to step forward and say, we are dealing with two very, very major crisis in our country right now. On the one hand, we have an unprecedented climate catastrophe unfolding, something that the Conservatives pretend doesn't exist. A climate catastrophe that dislocated over 200,000 people this summer alone. A climate catastrophe that has now impacted over 60% of Canadian small businesses. That people are frightened about what the future holds and they want to know that a burning planet can be addressed through policies that force down the use of fossil fuel emissions. They expect that from us. Instead, from the Conservatives, they get a, uh, a party platform of climate denial, of saying, not to worry that the planet's burning. We're going to make fossil fuel burning free for everybody. That as Kelowna was burning, the city of Kelowna was burning. We had the MP for their region not standing up for the people, but standing up for this myth that burning carbon fuels was somehow going to be good for everybody. That is a failure of leadership. It's also a failure to the planet, and it's a failure of our responsibility to tell people the truth of what we're facing right now in an unprecedented climate catastrophe. So it could have been perfectly fair in that fall economic statement for the Prime Minister to say, we are dealing with an unprecedented climate catastrophe. We need to make sure that the policies that we have in place work. And one of the policies that they've sold the country was carbon pricing. It would have been equally fair for the Prime Minister to say in a fall economic statement, we're dealing with an unprecedented crisis. Uh, they call it affordability, but as my colleague from Skeena Bulkley Valley pointed out, it's a much deeper and much more troubling crisis. The crisis of people unable to heat their homes, people unable to feed their families. 
So the Prime Minister could have said, we, we are going to find a way across this country to take some pressure off. To do that would have been a reasonable suggestion to say, and we're going to take the GST, HST of home heating. Why? Well, because it's not a luxury to heat your home in Canada, particularly in regions like mine that goes to minus 45 and sometimes minus 50. It's not a luxury. This is not wasteful uh, spending on behalf of citizens. This is about keeping your families alive. To take the HST off, the GST, would have affected people across the country and it would have been fair. But the Liberal government didn't do that. They opted to focus on home heating oil, which certainly is a very problematic fuel that we need to address. It also is a fuel that tends to be used by people in more regional, rural and poor regions who can't afford to switch. But the way it was laid out was so cynical. It was about defending uh, beleaguered Liberal MPs in Atlantic Canada. It sent a very clear message that the Prime Minister's focus here was keeping his MPs above the waterline and not responding to the needs of Canadians. So it was not a credible plan. And what it did is now pitted region against region. It's raised serious questions about whether this Prime Minister has an environmental plan to deal with the climate crisis. And it also raises questions about the whole pitch of carbon pricing. Canadians were told that this was going to be a fundamental feature. And New Democrats have argued with the government on carbon pricing over the years because we have said, listen, we need to make the big polluters pay. The people who are actually damaging the planet and destroying our kids' future, they're the ones who should be paying. Senior citizens who have to heat their home in rural northern Ontario are not responsible for the climate crisis. There needs to be a balance just across the board uh, in position, raised real questions about fairness. And so what we ended up having in this situation now is that one group of people are being exempted and we're hearing all kinds of positive reasons for it, but what it, the fundamental issue is coming down to, they were being exempted because they represent regions that are uh, represented by Liberals who are very f afraid about their future. So that's not good enough. So we have said all along, it should have been the GST from the get-go. We know that the Conservatives voted against our attempt to bring in the taking off of the heating on the GST because that would have covered people across the country. Now what the Conservatives have brought to, to us today is another way of dividing region against region because they know that if we just take the carbon tax off, it's not going to mean anything for people in British Columbia who are still paying heating bills. They're not covered by the carbon tax because they're under cap and trade. Neither is Quebec because Ke Quebec is under cap and trade. So one part of the re country will have taxes taken off their heating and another part of the country won't. So we need to address, if we're going to talk about climate crisis and affordability, we have to put in place measures that are not ad hoc, measures that are not gotcha moments, measures that address the difficulties that we're facing across the board. So to that, New Democrats have said time and time again that the people who are making the, the pollution have to make be the ones paying. Rich Kruger, CEO of Suncor, who said there's a sense of urgency right now as our planet is burning for the big oil industry to make as much money as possible as they're firing workers as they're moving to automation and as they're doing uh, stock buybacks, they can be paying the greater share for carbon pricing. We can take the efforts to make sure that this is across the board and fair. So I would like, if we're going to stop pitting region against region, to move this amendment, seconded by the member of Skeena Bulkley Valley, this following amendment that is, quote, that the motion be amended by adding after the words, all forms of home heating, the following, and to eliminate the GST on home heating in provinces where no federal carbon tax is in place. That would be fair across the board. Fair. Thank you.